This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, here we are already in December. We're in the last month of the year and with all the uh, authors who think, oh my gosh, I didn't work to get it into the bookstores for the holiday sales, we're going to talk about how you can plan for next year. So you don't miss whether it's the Christmas holidays, the Mother's Day holiday, which is a huge holiday for selling books, or any of the other holidays, including maybe one you made your own. So with me again is return guest Amy Collins, who has known, uh, does know, but it comes from a, a pedigree of working with buyers of both traditional box bookstores like Barnes & Noble, Borders when it used to be, um, as well as the small independents. And here's what our focus is all today. There is gold, gold for your book sales in the independent markets. And so Amy and I are going to be jumping into this. You can find Amy at amy at newshelves.com. And I'd certainly recommend you you uh, subscribe to her blog. So lots of lots of tidbits. And we're just going to jump into a variety of ideas on who, what, where, and why, as well as how to proceed to get the attention of any independent bookstore. So, Amy, welcome back to Author You, You Guide to Book Publishing. Thank you, Judith. Thank you. I, I love being and talking to you uh, on these sessions. Well, it's, it's, it's always, number one, it's fun, but it's always informative. Um, and I, th- I think that what makes it work for you and I is that we're both out there all the time with our ears open, eyes peeled, and really getting a sense of what's happening in the current market as well as kind of a intuitive, where are we going from here? And I think that's really what the trend is happening. And, and we saw this happening actually a couple of years ago, wouldn't you say? We did, but I didn't trust it. I'll be ah. honest with you and with anyone who's listening. I, uh, dude, I was very suspicious. I've always thought that independent bookstores and independent gift stores would go the same way as, I don't know, independent hardware stores or independent grocery stores have, that they would eventually become such a small and, and rural-based phenomenon that they would not have any heft. I, I saw the turnaround a couple of years ago. You and, you and I discussed it, but I thought it was temporary. I was so wrong. The number of, boy, in 2009... There were just over 1,600 independent bookstores in the country. Now, that includes used bookstores. That includes used and antiquarian. But now there's over 2,300. And just in the last six years, over 2,300 independent bookstores, and a lot of those are what we call generalist independent bookstores, meaning they sell new books. They're not just used books or antiquarian mm-hmm. bookstores. This, and according to the U.S. Census data, we're on track to grow another huge amount of independent generalist bookstores by 2020. I think you and I were saying you were, uh, we were sharing, there's going to be over 2,800 of them within the next few years. And I, I know you saw it, Judith, but I didn't trust it. And I got to say, I am, I couldn't be more thrilled because I love independent bookstores. And as borders closed and, and Elliot's closed and laureates and crown. And over the years, as we watch all the chains grow and then die, Independent bookstores have always been there. Well, here's what I think one of the differences, Amy, is that I think independent bookstores have a heartbeat. And when I say that, there is a heartbeat within the community that if you go back to the to the movie that Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks were in, in You've Got Mail, 
And she is the owner of this really lovely, lovely little children's shop, right? Remember the, the bookstore mm-hmm. she had? I and do. Tom Hanks was the big box shop dude. Shop around the corner, based yeah, on the, a real store on 18th in New York. Yeah, at the shop around the corner. And going in, and I think that what happened is when the boxes came in, and there, whether it was a can display, whether it was always the book was, uh, the store was laid out in exactly this commercial format. I mean, they never thought about changing around like when I go into a Costco, for example. It, every other month, it's like, oh, all right, where did you move the mayo? You know, <laughs> because... because they understood that if you move things around, then people would shop more because they'd have to hang out more. And I mean, it's very interesting, that whole method of selling. But I think with the indies, which I've always preferred, and I guess I was able to break my teeth on stores like Powell's and um, uh, 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 Clean Well Lighted Place in California and uh, certainly the Tattered Cover here in my home base of Colorado now, that they really have understood the um, the essence of the heartbeat and really connecting with the community and not thinking that everybody is the same. Plus, the personnel really do love books and know books. They're just not there for the summer help. And I, I think that's a big difference. It is. I have nothing against chains. I and you don't either, Judith. I know no, I mean, chains I, I have don't. done a yeah. lot of good, but there's a place for everything and everything in its place. Um, and for those of us who are really into tidying up and, and organizing of our stuff, the same is true for our business. There is a place for Costco and Barnes and Noble in our business plans, but we cannot ignore and and we ignore at our own peril the independent gift shops, the independent bookstores that are out there, discounting them, uh, which was, I'll be frank, a mistake that I made back in 2006. 2005, 2006, I started discounting them. And I was wrong. I was just flat out wrong. Because by 2010, 2011, I realized how valuable they were and that they weren't going anywhere. And I'll, I'll admit when I'm wrong, they, they offer such... A, a safety net for independent and small presses and small publishers, and they they increase the bottom line so dramatically, you ignore them at your peril. And and I think that's the the, the risk um, that too many do. They think I just want to get in the bookstore. But at, since we just did a program at Author You with Tattered Cover, the new owners of Tattered Cover and their new uh, author liaison that one of the things that we absolutely emphasize, and I said to the group, that are you really, don't approach independent bookstores, or any bookstore for that matter, unless you are dedicated to driving traffic there in some way or other. If you are not, and it's your ego who says, my book is at this store, because if you don't drive people to buy the books, your book will not be at that bookstore very much longer. Isn't that true? Exactly. Our job as publishers, let let me back up. Our job as authors is to write and create a killer book. Our job as publishers is to package and present a killer book. But our job as published authors, so I understand the difference. We're an author, we're a publisher, but our job as a published author whether you're the publisher or not, is to promote that book. Once you are a published author, once you've gotten through the writing part, the authoring part, once you've gotten through the publishing process, then you are a published author. And you and your publisher, even if you're the same person, have one job, and that is to get that book into the hands of readers. You cannot let that rest on anyone else's shoulders. That's your job. Just getting into the bookstores isn't enough. Your job isn't done until somebody has walked in bought the book, taken it to the register, paid for it, taken it home, started reading on it, threw out the receipt and spilled coffee on it. Once that's done, unless it's an e-book, in which case, through, you, know, you know, fritzed it. But once that's done, you, then you can rest on your laurels for that one customer, and then you have to go find another one. That's our job. And, and I think that they really have to understand you, you're, you're switching hats here. 
and going back and forth. And it can be, it can be really fun. And I'm going to also say to everyone that you also need to be prepared. If your book is stagnant and it's not moving, I suggest you get down there and buy a few copies of it to, to number one, support the store. Um, and two, show that there's some action. And who knows, you may get one of the, the, either the buyer, you could get someone who works within the bookstore actually talking about your book to other people. And that's a home run. That's a huge home run. We discovered, uh, here's one of the things you might want to find out. If you have your indie bookstores often have a, a, um, a recommended section somewhere there's a bookshelf that the staff recommends all these different books and they sign these little cards and they put them up find out who owns that bookshelf who owns that section because there's someone usually in charge of it i discovered at the tattered cover it was the woman who ran the cafe and I would actually take books directly to her. She recommended one of our books, and my God, Amy, over a hundred sold just in a couple of weeks with that going up on the shelf. Mm. It's that kind of creativity and willing to take a hard look at what's really going on that that helps authors be successful. And I love the sentence you started out with, Judith. If mm -hmm. your book, if your sales are stagnating, if they're floundering, if they're not where you want them to be. And then you said, go in and buy some books. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. you went on to say, and I, I think everyone should do this. If your sales are not where, where you want them to be, ask yourself, what am I doing and what can I do differently? Switching it up every couple of weeks, trying something new every couple of weeks is, is a key success metric. And so, you know, you decided, Judith, to walk in and find out who owned the suggestion shelf. Some mm -hmm. people are focusing totally on radio. Maybe they should back away from radio if it's not working and mm -hmm. go focus mm -hmm. on blogs. Maybe all they're doing is a blog tour and they're blogging like crazy and they're not getting anywhere. Maybe they should stop and focus on newspapers. If what you're doing is not working, it's easy to tell because you check your bank account. Check your bank account. Are you happy? Then keep doing what you're doing. Check your bank account. Not happy? You need to make a change. It's just, it's, guys, it's not rocket science. It's as no, simple it's, as that. It's not. And, and let me give one idea, and we're going to take our first break, and then we're going to get into some really how-tos here. But uh, we have a, in Denver, we have a, a really neat, I wish it was closer to where I lived, a uh, store called Indie called The Book Bar. And it's it's a bar, and it's also a bookstore. It's not a huge bookstore. It's an intimate gathering. I sent out an email one uh, one morning, and I just said, hey, Meet me at the book bar for a glass of wine. And um, and as Amy knows, How I don't How early in the drink. morning, Judith, did you want people yeah. to meet you for a glass of wine? Oh, oh no, I, I gave them a time. Meet me at 5 o'clock. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Meet me at the, at, the, at the book bar at 5 o'clock. You know, I've got my new book out, and I'd love to just share a few tips from you. And I just said the first glass is on me. Well, about 20 people showed up, and we sold all those books, all the books. So, you know, just kind of figure out. And I just did it. I just did a posting. I did a uh, posting in, in, you know, in my social media. I didn't do a big blast email. I just said, hey, if you're in Denver, meet me here. I'm going to be here for about an hour and join me for a glass of wine. So that's what we did. Anyway, um, there are just, there's so ideas. So what I want to do in our next segment is really start diving into it. You're hearing the Indies are growing. How do we embrace them and work with them? This is author you, your guide to book publishing with me is Amy Collins. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know, but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good. With if you already have a book out, you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author You brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. 
Through Author Use Extensive Network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Every picture tells a story. And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for... Excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303 985 4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. One of the most important decisions you will ever make is your choice for printing your book. You are choosing a company which will be responsible for guiding you through the process and printing your book at a level of quality and detail that embraces your personal and creative needs. You want to choose a company that when your book finally arrives, you are delighted and ready to move on to the next level and one that is customer focused. Choose King Printing Company and Addy Books to be that company that brings you to the next level. Go to kingprinting.com or call 978-458-2345 and ask for Tom Campbell. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book. If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right. So we've given you already a few ideas for you to get started, but it starts with the personal touch. And I think what you need to understand working with independent bookstores really demands a relationship of some sort. Would you agree, Amy? Yes. Uh, and a relationship like any relationship starts by respecting the other person's needs and wants. So when you're entering into this relationship with a bookstore, I am begging you guys, don't go into it thinking, what can they do for me? Go into it thinking, what can I do for them? And I have some tips for you guys, but that is when you're starting the relationship, do it, do it properly. Do it with the other person's needs in mind. And, and that, is, that is the first thing. What can I do for you? <laughs> what what yeah. are your needs? What is your pain? And, well, of course, what they want is traffic and sales. Exactly. Book buyers are just like anyone else. They want to impress their bosses. And if they happen to be the owners of the store, they want to impress their wives or their family. They want to be seen as doing a good job. And how do buyers get judged as doing a good job? They purchase books that sell. Because if books are selling... Then And if they're making money, then they're doing a good job. And they want to work with authors and publishers that understand this. If I walk into a store, which I'll admit I have, when I was younger, 
I would, you know, and I was a sales rep. I would walk in so excited about the newest copy of a book because it was a terrific book. The book buyers are tired. They're jaded. They're exhausted. They have seen 3,000 books that week. Uh, they understand that it's a great book I'm holding. There's lots of other great books that are all waiting in a huge, huge stack on their desk. What they want to know is, what am I going to do or what is the author going to do to drive sales of this terrific book? There's, there's a lot of terrific books out there. There's no dearth of terrific books. What there is is a lack of publishers and authors that are promoting those books. Oh, and, and, and actually, we, we need to say this for everyone, uh, that's the norm. And the, the number of publishers and authors who really promote books are at a very small minority. So mm-hmm. it's not difficult to shine if you get your act together here. Exactly. So, um, you know, truly talented authors and beautifully published books are everywhere. There's a lot of talented authors. There's not a lot of successful authors. Now, I'm with you. You want to be a talented author? You may already be there, and congratulations. But do you want to be a successful author? That includes keeping in mind the store's desires, their needs, and fulfilling them. And one of them is book sales. So how do you help with book sales? You can offer, and you should, offer to spend some time promoting the store. If you're going to ask the store to stock your book, why wouldn't you throw a few article ideas out at a local paper in that area? And and if they bite, if the paper decides to write a story about you, or let's say you even create a top 10 list for the paper so that they don't have, they can fill up some of their much needed space. And if you do that, why wouldn't you mention that your book's available at that bookstore? at the bottom of your article or the bottom of your listicle or your infographic promote the store. And, and that's really the key. Promote the store. You're secondary. They just, they want to shine. They star. You'll get people there. And it really becomes what they call the old win-win, which is what every, all of us, all of us are after. And what Amy just said just a few minutes ago, that you want to be a talented a, a well-respected writer, um, and you want to be successful. There is a difference between them, and you can be you you can write the best prose, the best words, the best sentences, the best paragraph, the most incredible story. But if you don't get out and push it and get the sales, few are going to hear about it, and that's the truth. That's the truth. And I've had I've had students and clients say to me. Amy, it's not worth it for one store. It's just, I mean, why? That's a lot of. That's a lot to do for one store. And so I want to. I want to give you an example. I have several. But Judith, do you remember Chester County Books out in Pennsylvania before they closed? Yes. Just yeah, Chester County Books, a beautiful little independent bookstore, beautifully run. Um, and I hear actually they they're coming back, but at the moment they're they're, they're not with us. And but a, a year or two ago they were and. And a few years ago, there was an author who came out with a thriller novel, a thriller no- a hostage situation, Rebecca Padula. And she got her independently published, her small press published thriller novel into Chester County book. She started promoting Chester County. Chester County started promoting her. It was a love fest. In 90 days, three months, they sold over 4,500 copies of her book. Chester County Books only had two locations, 4,500 copies of this one woman's book. She went on to become a USA Today bestselling author. Other independents in the country started taking notice because her book scan numbers were going through the roof. And all of a sudden, her book took off. And it all started. Now, will your book, I'm not saying your book, this will happen with your book, but I'm saying you ignore independent bookstores or you tell yourself that it's not worth the trouble at your own peril. The, the, um, there's a, a whole series of books that I have examples of. And, Judith, we will be discussing it on January 5th. But there's so many books that I can tell you weren't getting attention. And then all of a sudden an independent bookstore gave it some love. And next thing you know, it's getting a Caldecott medal. 
independent bookstores make an enormous difference to your business, but you can make an enormous difference to theirs. You guys have to promote each other. And and that's huge uh, in in the area. Now I'm going to mention I've mentioned this before, and I'm going to uh, encourage all of you to do that. Discoverindiebound.org. And what Amy has just said is, indies chat amongst themselves, as well as Barnes and Noble uh, managers chat amongst themselves. And when a book starts moving or gets the attention, or maybe some staff members fall in love with it and people start talking it up, this is where the buzz factor really comes into play. Um, I I am a huge proponent of IndieBound.org, and I would encourage all of you to make sure that you, number one, explore it, and and uh, get the logo and the click through on your uh, information page on your personal website. Yes, I know you have Amazon. We know that Amazon sells over seventy percent of all books in the U.S. right now. But I I added a little line saying I'm a huge supporter of independent bookstores, and I'd encourage you to support your local independent and you and literally find it by clicking on the on the uh, uh, the, the logo here and that just enter your zip code and it'll come up within seconds all the independent bookstores within your zip code area and that's that's a huge plus and then you and then here's what I would do I would go to the next step and I would connect, start building that relationship if you haven't already, and tell your local bookstore that you are going to be putting a link on your page so people can find them. So from anywhere in the exactly. U.S. Exactly. I want everyone to keep in mind that in 1999, you know, Borders and Barnes & Noble had everyone's attention, and Amazon was just a, a blink on the horizon. And Mm -hmm. then by 2005, 2006, people were sitting up and taking notice of Amazon. And by 2011, Borders was gone. I mean, Borders was gone. That was unheard. We had we couldn't even fathom that. And and the chains, the enormous chains, Fye and some of the and remember music stores, guys. Remember when you used to hang out at Sam Goody and Coconut? I mean, things change. Things are constantly shifting. And the successful publishers are the publishers who are keeping an eye on the horizon and paying attention to what's coming. Amazon is not always going to be king any more than Barnes and Noble. They had their day in the in the sun, and I'm not saying they're dead, but uh, but they're definitely changing. There's far fewer Barnes and Nobles now than there were ever in the history of time. Walden Books. At one point, there were 1,500 Walden Books spread across this country. Can't even find them now. Everything changes. It's the only constant in our industry. So please don't depend on the Barnes & Noble, the Walmarts, the Costcos, and the Amazons to sell your books for a few reasons, starting with Walmart, Costco, Amazon does not love you and support you. And so the sort of support that Judith was just talking about that you can show an independent with IndieBound.org and also making sure that your book's available through Kobo. K O B O your ebook. Independent stores will often partner with Kobo and sell ebooks through their website. Paying attention to the independent marketplace is keeping an eye on the future. So you know, let, let me just uh, segue here on the ebook because we, we are uh, some of the authors are doing these campaigns. Um, you know, on KDP Select. And that's a 90-day hold off. So I, I just want to tell everyone, because I'm a huge supporter of Kobo, especially if you have got global sale co- you know, possibilities in Japan, Australia, um, parts of Europe, that they really tap into the Kobo market um, hugely here. And that if you do Amazon, the KDP, you don't go on anybody else. You strip everything so if you're going to do a KDP run, you I would just start there, and then after your 90 days, then you add on the others. Anything you want to add to that, Amy? That, that if your business model is Amazon only, I don't have an argument with that. I really don't. There are some authors that that makes sense for them. 
if you're an ebook only author and I mean, yes, Judith, that's true that what you said is that Amazon sells over 70% of the books in this country, but that's including ebooks because they sell well over 90% of the ebooks in this country. And yes. so if that's your business model, if you are an ebook only author or publisher and you're you're a romance novelist who's who's trying to get 10,000 sales at a dollar 99 over the, absolutely go for it. But most authors need to have a, a farther reaching plan that includes mm-hmm. the international market and that includes a number of things. And so yes, spread your business plan. Do it. You don't you would never ever put your your meal on a table with only one or two legs. I'm, I'm asking, put as many legs under your table as you can. The, the, the more legs you have, the sturdier your, your, your meal and your plan will be. Yes, because sometimes legs do break. So you want to yes. have as, as many as possible with that. And then I'm all, and we're going to take another quick break here. But I just I want to say to all of you that uh, I personally think it's a mistake to be a one format pony. Um, I ebooks only, print only, audio only. I think that you should be kissing them all and doing that because remember, not everyone likes ebooks or reads ebooks. In fact, there's huge data that shows a migration from the e world back to the print world. We're going to be right back with me as Amy Collins. It's author you, your guide to book publishing, and we're talking about the power of the independent bookstore and gift store market. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing, Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Want to publish like a pro today? Well, then take a look at Ingram Spark, the only publishing platform that offers print and ebook services through a single source. Upload, edit, and manage titles all in one place. Take more control of printing costs with print on demand and reach even more readers through one of the world's most extensive distribution networks. Built by independent publishers for independent publishers, Ingram Spark has everything you need to maximize your book's potential color printing, ebook distribution, print on demand, global reach, and more. Start publishing with Ingram Spark today and see just how far your titles will go tomorrow. That's IngramSpark.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, Amy, we kind of dug into this. I think we've set the stage. So if we were going to look for uh, critical tips, and we haven't really got into the gift store, um, you know, the you know, whether it's uh, Hallmark stores, which I can't believe there's still a lot of those around, and they seem to be doing better than ever. So um, <laughs> maybe it's... One of those things that we thought was going to go with the way with the buggy whip and it didn't happen. But um, what? How do we approach a gift store? What? 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 All what right. should we be doing? I'm just going to give some random tips that are in no particular order of of important things to keep in mind. So, everyone, get your pencils out. Start to you know start your engines. These mm-hmm. tips are things that I have found over the last couple of years really help when I'm approaching a gift store buyer. These tips will also work for the independent bookstore market. So keep, keep them in mind for both. But when approaching any sort 
of independent retailer. You know, there are still independent hardware stores out there. Great place to sell certain types of books. Pet stores, yoga studios. There's, there's independent gift shops and spas. So, you know, think creatively. So my first tip is when you're going after retailers is to pay, really pay attention to the signs that you drive by. I want you, if you can, to have a friend or a loved one get in the driver's seat of a car and spend a couple of hours driving around your neighborhood, and I want you to sit in the passenger seat, either with your iPhone or, or a piece of paper and a pencil, and I want you to, to document all the different retailers you drive by. You don't even, you cannot get that kind of access online. You do not know until you drive around your neighborhood what's really, and really look what's out there. And you will get so many ideas. So my first tip is to not depend on your assumptions, but to get out there and look to see what sort of retailers actually exist. Tip number one. Tip number two, I want you to contact these retailers from a position of being of service to them. And one of the best ways to be of service to them is to pay attention, use your common sense, but pay attention to the retail world. Perhaps walking into a store at 1230 on a Saturday afternoon is not a great idea. Perhaps calling an independent gift store that sells candles and, and frames and the like on December 20th, not a great idea. Pick your timing. Tip number two, is to be of service, to, if you're going to be of service, start by helping them get their job done properly. Do not interrupt them at key times. Saturday afternoons are not great. 5.30 on a Thursday afternoon, not good. Call them at 11 o'clock on a Tuesday. How does 2.15 on a Thursday sound? That's when you should be reaching out to some of these stores. Find out when the slow times are. Tip number three. When approaching a buyer, please ask them first what their prefer preferred method of communication is. Do they prefer email? Would they prefer you call, stop in? What time is good for them? Start by asking them what works for them. If you approach a buyer and start telling them what you want as opposed to what they need, you're not going to get as far. So if you approach them with a the proper attitude and a desire to be helpful, if you approach them at the right time, if you do your research, when you hit the gift store market, you're going to be able to take off so much more effectively than an author who says, I think I'll go to Hallmark and shows and, and calls them at, at 4.30 on a Saturday afternoon on December 23rd and calls a Hallmark store, not knowing that the Hallmark store is actually part of a chain, not knowing if they're a franchise, you know. Guys, I want you to take some time and really think from the point of view of a buyer, and you will be so successful. I have a lot more tips, Judith, but what do you think of those first three? No, I think number one, they're kind of common sense to me. But if you haven't done any kind of sales, as as someone who's been in sales for a long time, and and worked behind the counter, my first my first job was at the May Company at a dollar an hour, if you can imagine, and in sales that there are absolutely peak and slow times. So I think it's, it, 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 number one, it, to know uh, uh, how they prefer to be communicated with in person, face-to-face, -face, on the phone, email, snail mail, how. Always ask that. It's critical. And then number two, I think it is really important to understand what the busy times are. And in that communication, you might ask them, it, which is your preferred time of day to reach out to you and they'll let you know they're not they're not going to tell you at 4 30 with a five o'clock closing <laughs> they're not going to tell you that um and so that that and then i think the other thing that's really critical to understand what the product is of the company and think of a way that your book whether it's a theme whether it's a title whether it's their demographics how does it complement what that store is offering to their customers. And then the other thing I would let them know, um, it, it, if, if it looks like a deal's coming together, that they, I would let them know that I would like to do a, a promotion uh, recommending their store and sending it out to your social media list that so maybe drive some traffic to them. I don't think anyone would be upset if you did that. 
No, they would love it. Offer to write an article for their newsletter. Ask them mm-hmm. if they'd like a top 10 list or an infographic for their website. Um, another tip that is something at this time of year, if you walk into any, ind- to go back to independent bookstores for one moment, if you walk into any independent bookstore right now, for the most part, you will see a catalog by the front door or sitting on the front counter from your local American Booksellers Association. There's regional catalogs. There's, they're in the Southwest. They're in the Pacific Northwest, Mid-Atlantic. They're in every region of the United States. And if you're listening from outside of the United States, if you're listening from Canada or something, they also have them up there. They're just not through the American Booksellers Association. These holiday gift-giving catalogs, are a fantastic way to get your book into independent bookstores all over the country. You you advertise your book or you get a listing in these holiday catalogs, and they're not just for the the winter holidays. They have a seasonal catalog for Mother's Day. Judith, you were talking about how hot Mother's Day is. We Mm -hmm. we call it moms, dads, and grads. Everyone does. But moms, Mm -hmm. dads, and grads season, now is the perfect time to be contacting the American Booksellers Association and asking for their listing rates for the mom, grads, and dads catalog, getting your book, if it's a perfect gift-giving or if it's a good book for moms, dads, and grads, if it's a great beach read, if it's a good, you know, new year, new you, find the right time of year for your book. Get your book listed in some of these catalogs. They, independent bookstores will purposely support books that they will buy the books that are in this catalog because they're recommending it to their clients. And if the catalog is sitting on their counter and is a freebie and people are picking it up, why, you know, it would make sense for them to have a few of your books in inventory or at least know where they can get them pronto. And, and, that's and they what do. We, yeah. And they do. They, it, it, my experience is that leads directly to sales. And Amy, do you have an idea what the range is for some of that advertising? Yes, in some catalogs, it's as low as $400, $450 for a a simple listing. In Mm -hmm. other catalogs, it could be upwards of, if you wanted the the inside back cover, it could be three grand. Um, Exactly. It depends on, but but it's a a pretty small investment, especially, now, now, California. California has more independent bookstores than any state in the union. So... You, the, the California, the American uh, Booksellers Association, you know, that's in Southern California up, and they, they go all the way up through, um, through the Sacramento area, and then the Pacific Northwest takes over. Their rates are slightly higher than, let's say, the Mountain State. You know, there's, there's not a lot of independent, independent bookstores in Wyoming. So also pick the poison. You may live in Wyoming, and that's great, but you might want to consider the Mid-Atlantic. Or if you've written a perfect beach read, perhaps you want to be pitching the Florida and the Southeast in the winter. You, you know, you want to get into perhaps, perhaps pitching Florida in June is not a great idea. Again, <laughs> think critically about where readers are going to be shopping for what right. sorts of books. If you have a beach read book, then it belongs in Florida in the winter. It does not belong in Wyoming in November. No, unless you're going to say a fireside read. That's <laughs> also a good idea. <laughs> where it's, it's, it's cold, you know, where it, where it comes in. We, I have to say that uh, uh, this morning here in Colorado, we had a 16 degrees when I got up. But So it's dipping down. No, no real snow yet, but dipping down. Well, up here in upstate New York, it's going to be mm-hmm. in the mid to high 60s today. Uh, stunning. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Unbelievable. Yeah, it is. Okay, so we, I, I love the idea of, uh, here's a, here's another thing. When you're doing a top 10 list, whether you put it on a, a card or uh, a, a bookmark that you can make a whole bunch and give them to them, you could certainly do some of those things. And, you know, it is so fast in some of the tu- turnarounds that you can do that you could actually approach a place and, and customize it and put, get their name on it. You know, you could print up 100 of them and give them to them, and who knows? It could really be a stimulus uh, to do that. And then don't forget that a lot of them have little blogs 
Um, and they do have their, as, as Amy said, their newsletter, the e-newsletter. Maybe you might want to offer to do a guest blog for them about the, the yeah. value of books or, or, or something that ties in with your, your information. And then, of course, in your signature, you would put a, your book is available at their bookstore. Exactly. And don't, don't neglect the appeal of the infographic. You can go to Fiverr.com right now with a top 10 list, a, a fun, sassy list from some topic of your book. Even if you've written a thriller novel, you know, top 10 ways to save the United States from, you know, uh, alien invasion or something. But you can go to Fiverr.com and have, for very inexpensively, a designer design a very attractive infographic from your top 10 list and you can start offering it to independent bookstores for their website or for their newsletter. They love magazine looking infographics. They're easy. They take up a good bit of space. They entertain people. Just be careful. Don't offer the same infographic to four different bookstores in Denver. Make sure you spread it out around the country. Right. And so depending upon what kind of cost you get, maybe you might, maybe they can make different variations too different visual exactly. looks, same information, but just differently presented. And and then you can circulate them. And of course, that you can certainly use yourself. I think that's a great idea. And I, you know, it's even though it says Fiverr doesn't mean it's going to cost you $5. It could get could run quite a bit more. You just have to find out and bid it and see what you come it up with. Could, but I've, I've gotten some very nice infographics done for less than $20. Well, and, and that's that's a great, uh, great return. So I, I think that would be well worth your marketing dollars. And you know what Amy and I are talking about here is that this is marketing. And a lot of this, I'd, I'd like to say this is marketing 101, but I know for a lot of you who are listening in, it feels really advanced. So we're going to take a quick break here. We're going to come back and really get into some of this nitty gritty here of just bang, bang, bang. We're going to have about 10 minutes to go and we'll come back and come with things that you could do starting today. Christmas is here. So, you know, getting in the bookstore is going to be tough, remote if that happens. But we're talking about, let's think new year, setting up what we can start with January. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. 
Today, we offer digital black and white and four color high speed inkjet printing, a cost effective way to introduce color into your short run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in house from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print on demand facility, streaming browser based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1 800 465 5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right. Gift stores, retailers, independent bookstores. It's a huge market for you. And books are doing well. They're, they have not gone the way of the dodo bird. Um, and as, as Amy said in an earlier part of the show, that some, some of the indies really do like to uh, partner with Kobo, K O B O, and offer ebooks as well to their customer base or let them know that they're be aware. So that's a, that's a, a powerful tip to know about. And a lot of authors still don't know about uh, alternate platforms. They just think Amazon is the only place you do eBooks and that's just incorrect. So Amy, let's, let's just kind of go through, let's say, let's say, all right, we're going to roll out this in January. Um, I've already got what I'm going to do this Christmas. I'm going to do this Christmas. I know I have a blog out this week on the bookshepherd.com with five ideas that you can do, including even how to wrap your book. So uh, let me just throw that out. Don't wrap your book in paper. Pick up a complimentary color on the cover, from the cover, a nice color. Go to your favorite craft store like a Michael's or a Hobby Lobby or something like that. And, and look for what ribbons are on sale, but just might be your color. And I think half inch usually works well, but certainly you can get up to an inch. And buy it. And I found that, that oh, I can get... And if a ten, if I have a ten foot, usually the shear is going to be a, a shorter, maybe four foot or four yard, that I can wrap four to five books, and I go from a corner down. I wrap around the back, come up the lower corner again around um, to the back, and just tie a simple bowl. It's it's beautiful. It's very attractive, and you could have these all pre-cut. So when you're signing any books, you can say, "Would you like me to wrap it for the gift you're giving?" And you know, people love that. They love it. And it just it looks it looks very festive. It can be done year round. You may just choose, you know, the color of uh, of the holiday season, whether it's Hanukkah, whether it's Christmas, you know, you've got lots of options. So that's my one idea to to spruce your wrapping up and make it simple. Well, wow, that's great. And for All those right. of you who would like to maximize your time because you know you, who who want to spread out your um your success rate and gain some momentum it is possible not only possible it is it is preferable to find a local talented stay-at-home mom or part-time college student or somebody uh, there's also VAs, there's there's online companies where you can outsource a lot of this contact. And I don't mean long term. I don't mean paying 25 or however many dollars an hour for 10 months, you know. But, but to get started, it is possible to outsource some of this contact if you find someone you like and trust to contact stores on your behalf. But there is no substitute. For, get, for launching it yourself, getting started. And, you know, Judith and I and several people out there, you know, people are surprised that I'm making my own sales calls for my book. Well, because who else knows it better? And, yes, I can out, and I do outsource some parts of it. I actually use an, an online company to do a lot of research and to get buyers' names for me. But once I have the buyers' names, 
I'm the one writing the email. Uh, most of, of, of the independent buyers that I have gotten to know, they prefer emails to start because they're busy and they don't want to spend 20 minutes on the phone with me. Although I'm charming, although I'm very fun to be with, they're a little busy. So they prefer emails. So I get the name and the email address of the buyer by having, I outsource that to a, a VA company. But once I've got a whole bunch of names, I'm the one writing the email because I'm the one with the personality. I'm the one they're going to have to deal with. And it is possible to lump some of these duties together so that you can get a very large lift in a very short period of time. Which is critical. And I, and I think that, Amy, you, you've heard it a zillion times. I just want to be left alone. I just want to write. I just want to write. I don't want to market. And, and, and that, so the deal is you don't want to sell books. I mean, <laughs> that's the deal. Right. And again, if you don't want to market, that's fine. You will be, and, and, will, and I am fine with you being a very talented author. You will probably not be a successful author. Mm-hmm. Now, some people will define success while well, I wrote the book, but most people don't define success. They, they want to see some action, whether it's, it's a, a reinforcement of your credibility, whether it's the media is knocking down your door, whether it's speaking engagements, and whether it's money dropping into your bank account, um, whether it's other deals that come your way. It could be Hollywood beckoning, uh, bookstores knocking down your door. I mean, you have to define what success is, and I think it's really important to do that up front. That's one of my tips. Understand what it is to be successful mm-hmm. at, as an author. All right, so Amy, we've Thanks got that. just... Yeah, let, let's just jump into it. So step one, in January, we're going to... Success outsourcing, I think, is absolutely critical. Get help. You can't do it all, but do the part that you know well. And Amy is absolutely right on. No one should be able to sell your book better than you. So spend December, instead of bemoaning the fact that you're not in every independent (laughs) gift store and bookstore for the Christmas season, I want you to spend December online or get your your virtual assistant or, or local college kid to help. But I want you to spend December researching and finding the buyer's names and emails at every independent gift and bookstore you can get your hands on. I want you to spend December in the car, in the passenger seat, driving around, because when you see the, the dog yoga studio and you say, oh, my God, I wrote a book about, about self-massage for, you know, massaging your dog, I, and you didn't know there was a dog yoga studio, I want you to get these ideas. So spend December putting your list together. Spend December online. Spend December finding out all the places you want to pitch so that January 6th, don't do it the first week in January. The first week in January is just as busy for bookstores and gift stores as the last week of December. Everyone, you know, but on the 7th of January, then you can start reaching out to stores. And it's simply approaching them by, by... saying you want to be of help, asking them if this is an okay time, telling them that you're going to be promoting your book and you'd like to promote their store. You are not approaching them telling them how great your book is. You're approaching them telling them how good you are at promoting. And you, you get them to agree to stock your book, either through you on consignment, but preferably on wholesale. I would really like it if you'd if you pay attention to, to the wholesale market and go through wholesalers. In many cases, it will... Once you hit 200 stores, you're going to want the wholesalers. You don't want to be shipping those books out and billing 200 different stores. You need the wholesalers to help you. And so spend January and February reaching out to the stores. But in January and February, I want you to do two things a day. Two things a day. This is it. I want you to reach out to one, a couple of stores a day. That's number one. And I want you to reach out to a couple of media opportunities a day, just a few, 15, 20 minutes, guys. I'm not talking about spending hours of your life, but in January and February, while you're promoting your book to the stores, I want you to be promoting it to the media as well. Because come March, when your book is sitting in those stores, I want your book out there in the media. I want people knowing about it. You have to do both. Does that make sense, Judith? It does. So I'm going to now add on to another deal is that we talked about this actually last week. 
is that I'm going to encourage everyone to go to TWUBS, T-W-U-B-S, T-W-U-B-S, TWUBS, and that's the um, hashtag uh, place, so you can find out uh, what's registered and what's not. And TWUBS has just recently now done an official registration for nine bucks, uh, where you can actually own it, a hashtag. First of all, get your name in a hashtag. Also, what keywords tie around your expertise uh, as, as an author, as, a, as an individual, as a consultant, as a fill in the blank. See if that is available. Buy it own it, get a good profile description to get in. Because what Amy's suggesting, which I am a huge supporter of, is getting these two media opportunities, is that you will come in and do a push here. And that then reporters uh, reporters love hashtags. Journalists love hashtags. And if you are tied to a key one that is, that is um, trending, that is topical, that your expertise... You're, you're going to become the player in town. This is all things that you should be doing now. So, we, Amy, we've got one minute to go. Let's tell them we have a fabulous webinar coming up next Tuesday, um, just a few days away on December 6th with yes. you. And we're December going to be going, 6th. yeah, step by step in details. Amy's put together a off the charts program to really rock and roll in the indie and GIF market. And I'm going to encourage all of you to take advantage of this. You will find the details um, on my website at, at, uh, at authoru.org. Details here, authoru.org. And if you just click on events, you can register directly for it. Also, if you're following my Twitter stream, either at, at my book shepherd or author you, that you will be seeing postings all along uh, to do a direct registration. Amy, you want to add to that? Just that this is a completely free webinar. Where yeah, free. Today's radio, this, today's radio uh, show was a conversation about why independent bookstores, and it gave us, but this free webinar is going to walk you through. I mean, we're going to literally walk you line by line through through an opening email, we're going to we're going to take you line by line through exactly what what the retailers are looking for in a sales kit. We're going to show you what a one sheet looks like and why you need one and what they entail. It's going to be all the details over the course of an hour. And when that's done, I'm going to stay on the webinar and answer everyone's questions. I offer, and I always do this with, and I pretty much only do this with Judith guys. There's no time limit. Usually I say, okay, you know, we've got 15 minutes for questions. No. If you've got questions about the independent gift bookstore market in any way, I am staying on the line until all of your questions are answered. And so there will be a full Q&A after. Uh, this is sponsored by Real Fast Indie Book Marketing, that, and, and it's going to be a great time. And I really hope you guys all come and sign up and spend that time with us. It will be worth your while, I promise. All right. So that's the sixth. Uh, next Tuesday, and it'll be it starts at seven o'clock Eastern. So, and I'll go to go to the websites. You'll find it authoru.org. There'll be the details all posted right now. Click on the registration and get on. And even if you can't attend live, register because I will send you by the next day the full replay, so you won't miss a yeah. single thing. Okay. All right. So, Amy, thank you so much for being with us. Wishing you Thank fabulous you. holidays and look forward to playing with you next Tuesday. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Judith. All right. Everyone, have a great, great December. Enjoy the holidays and, and don't overeat. What you can do is overwrite. I'm all for that. We'll see you next week. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week, a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take you, the author, to the next level. You'll learn tips and secrets on how to create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve book publishing success by making one very simple change in your book's journey. How to avoid the publishing predators. How to create an author and book platform that rocks. Learn how to make a living with your words and your books. Learn how to publish a book that has no regrets and so much more. For more information, check out AuthorU.org, where authors who want to be seriously successful go. And Judith's website, TheBookShepherd.com. 
Then join us again here next week for more. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Brought to you by Author You and the Book Shepherd. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific 